Oh, shit. That was a sea bass. Always oh, on the drops. Hey guys, we are out uh, fishing for sea bass and the condition is actually close to, close to perfect. Low, light intensity. Um, we got uh, some color in the, in the water and some, uh, some swell as well. And um, yeah, fishing with uh, this uh, magic minnow, a shad with an offset hook, perfect for sea bass. And uh, I'm pretty pumped. Let's see if we can, uh, can get a fish. You can see we got some waves smashing in. And the water is actually pretty murky. But that, that's not a bad thing for sea bass actually. They're out hunting now. And uh, if we just fish, fish this shed pretty slow, then the, the sea bass will feel the vibration and hit the lure. I'm just letting it drop to search the water columns. Some quick retrieves. And then letting it, letting it drop. 90% of the, the takes is always on the drops. Woo! Woo -hoo! It's a sea bass. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Oh. oh. I have to look out for It's behind the rock. rock. I'll just have to go for a climb. fell off. Whew. That was a really good fish actually. Probably a fish around 60 centimeters. And it took off and just got behind the rock and I had to follow it not to, to break off. And then I gave it, gave it some, some free line and it got the hook, hooks pulled out. We'll get a new one. Okay, third round, the, the, the bass got me, but uh, we'll catch uh, another one. And as you saw, the, the rocks is just crazy slippery, um, almost impossible to, to climb these rocks. And that's why I had to, to give some free line, so the line was not cut. But But we have two, two takes now in the first five casts, so... Yeah, another one! It's a small one, but... the first sea bass of the trip, a small one. But nice fish engulfed the, the magic minnow here. Perfect hooked it just in the corner of the mouth. And as you see, the perfect hook, hook set.
And the water is pretty murky, but still, still the sea, I feel the vibration of this magic minnow here. So, let's give it this freedom. Perfect. Let's get a bigger one. And as I said, I'm just letting it drop to the bottom. Well, there's a lot of uh, big rocks and the sea bass is standing just among these rocks, waiting for ambush on sand eels and could be small herring, but they're also eating a lot of crabs. Especially the big ones. They're actually pretty lazy, the big ones. Just swimming around near the bottom, picking up crabs, and shrimps and all that stuff. Of course they will also hunt a fish. But you just have to, to, to get it just in front of their, their mouths. And the whole time I'm just trying to, to stay connected with the bait when it sinks. So I can feel the bite. But it's actually never hard to feel the bite when they engulf the bait. The reel is really engulf it really hard. But a lot of the time when I'm fishing here, there, there will be a lot of wind and then sometimes it can be hard to stay connected and feel the bite with the lure. But then it's important to have a, to have a fishing line with some color. I use a, a white one and um, then it's a lot easier to see. I'm always looking at the line, even though if it have a, a big bend, and then I'll I'll see the see the bite on the line. But right now there's not a lot of rain, wind actually, so it's pretty nice. The past days there's been a lot of wind pushing waves and swell into the shoreline that's made the, the water pretty pretty murky but it's starting to, to clear up now and just at this moment right now is the perfect conditions and hunting conditions for sea bass actually we are fishing polars and polars is basically just rocks um, structure going from the beach to protect the land from erupting by the sea and uh, we got all this rock structure and what we are fishing it's basically just rocks that the, the waves are taking out in the ocean and now the sea bass is lying down among these rocks and waiting for our ambush and uh, there's quite a few of these polars here so we'll try to to jump from polar to polar to search w new waters for, for sea bass so when we're fished here for like 10 to, to 30 minutes then we'll move to another one if there's not a lot of fish turning up here. And these, this rock formation is uh, lying in a straight line beneath the water, just like the polar out here. So we're fishing out on the rocks, but also searching on both sides 
for fish lying it's a sea bass a small small one again but nice to get some bites Small sea bass here. It's beauty. I love sea bass. But I think too many small fish. I think we'll have to move on now and try the ne next polar. Yeah. When you're fishing out here, it's a searching game. So always stay mobile and search some new, some new waters. We'll try the next pole out there. Usually a day I'll fish like around 10 polars. It's a, it's a bit tough, but nice to stay fit. There's a bit of a walk here between the polars. So I thought I'd tell you a bit about the gear I'm using. This is a 10 foot rod. This is a V6, uh, 10 to 40 grams, 10 foot to, to get out and have uh, some distance to, to the fish when you're, when you're landing them. I have a 3000 wheel spool with the 02 braid and a liter of 0.6 fluorocarbon. Here we are at the next polar. Let's give it a try. Okay, I had some luck with the magic minnow bouncing like close to the bottom at last spot. So why not continue with that? Come on, come on bass. It's a bit, a little bit bigger. I'll try landing it here. Come on, yeah, just around the rock there. Come on, perfect. Just let's get the landing net here. Perfect. Another fine sea bass. On first cast at the new spot. Beautiful spiky sea bass. Took the magic minnow. 20 grams. Perfect bait for sea bass. Let's release it. Off it goes. It's always a good sign when you get a bass in the first cast. Let's just hope we can get one that's a bit bigger than that. Almost every cast I'm always checking the hook 
the offset hook if it's out or not, because otherwise it will get stuck on the stone. It was a bite. You have to stay focused every time, but just had a few seconds where I was not focused and then there, there came a bite. You can easily feel if it's a big one or a small one on the bite. If it's a big one, you can really feel a vacuum when it sucks the bait in. And if it's a small, it will just be a tap. So I think it was a small one. But I'm pretty sure there's a few big fish lurking here. Oh, just had a <laughs> just had a bite. Perfect. <laughs> there it is. It's another, another small bass. Just caught in this wheel. Yeah, oh shit. <laughs> Not a bad fish. Probably surpassing 50 centimeters. Oh, close. Just beautiful bass. A long land landing net is a necessity here on the slippery rocks. Also for a release. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's some heavy swill. There it goes. Oh. Another nice fish. When we are talking sea bass, as I see it, there's two types of sea bass. There's the stationary fish and there's the shoaling fish, which is swimming around from place to place. And the shoaling fish, they're usually a bit smaller and hunting closer to the surface, where, where the stationary fish usually are uh, erroneously uh, a bit bigger and that's the kind of fish we're targeting because they are bigger and they are standing closer to the bottom and uh, they are a bit more lazy and just like to get the bait served on a plate before the nose so until now we've got some shoaling fish some smaller fish and I just lost a, a bigger one that's probably a probably a stationary fish that's also why after we fished the place we we've moved to another spot to find some fresh stationary fish when I'm fishing for stationary fi fish the bigger ones I'm usually using baits with offset hooks and that's because I'm fishing close to the bottom where, where the, there's rocks and uh, seaweed and mussels and all that stuff so it's really important to use a bait with an offset hook so you're not get tangled up and the baits I'm using it's magic minnow which have a, an offset hook and uh, then I'm also actually using the creek crawl in various sizes Fish takes a style. On the other hand, if I'm fishing for schoolies, the smaller fish, I'm, uh, I'm using spoons 
like this one, salty, and uh, it's like this, Sandy Andy. And then it's uh, often smaller fish, uh, so I'm tagging them with some a bit lighter gear because then you can have some fun. So I have to cover some more water with with this salty jig. If I, it have quite a long uh, casting distance. Okay, it seems like there's a bit of a pattern here. Every pole that we came to, there was an immediate response from the bass. And uh, afterwards, when we tried other baits, there were no response. So I think, I think the, the bass is in a good hunting mode. And uh, so I think we'll have to try to, to move around quicker to search some more water. It's a big one! Whoa! That's a good fish! Wow! Come on! What? I'm actually not sure it's that good anymore. But it's not a small fish. And it's in. Oh, I just have to catch my breath. Beautiful fish. Woo. It's important to have a long net, especially also when you're releasing the bass around here. Now we'll give this sea bass its freedom. There it goes. Perfect. Most of the drops. It's a big one. This is crazy guys, the sun is setting and we just caught the last bass of the trip and it's actually a pretty, pretty nice bass. Look at it. What a beautiful bass in the last light of the sun.
definitely a, a good pass to, to finish the trip. So, so guys, I hope you enjoyed watching my trip here for sea bass. Um, and uh, if you like more ca content like this, please like and subscribe the channel. There will be more content out soon with uh, me and my teammates. So, yeah. Have a nice day. Let's release this beautiful bass. Oh, off it goes. Oh. Awesome.